What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, friends and family, what's happening? Man, what is it, Tuesday already? Is it Tuesday again? Sheesh. What up, friends? What up, family? What's happening, y'all? Listen, man, I love y'all. I absolutely love y'all, and I appreciate y'all, and I adore y'all, and I think that y'all are the greatest thing since sliced bread, and nobody could ever... Look, I don't care what they say about y'all. I love (laughs) y'all. Travis Rivas said, I wonder what happened to this morning stream. Okay, well, I'll give you a little bit of insight, Travis. So what happened to this morning stream was uh, sometimes, depending on who you're streaming, I've actually only had this happen a couple of times, if I had to be honest couple of times i've had it happen when i uh reacted to the breakfast club i think that vivek ramaswamy and bet and i don't know if it's anybody else that i actually had this happen to but essentially if you stream their content so usually i have zero problems with copyrighted content but if you stream some people's content um, and they want to stop you from streaming it, even if you get control of it to, you know, the authorization or whatever. By default, they can stop you from streaming it, um, from reacting to certain content. And then you got to go through the process or whatever, so on and so forth. So I just completely cut it out of the stream. But what happens is a lot of times once you're streaming it, it could temporarily suspend the stream. And then I'd go through some little stuff to get it back really quickly. But by that time, I was just like, they had already messed up my vibe. It was towards the end of the show. So I was just like skipping. I'm going to just go ahead and rock it out. So that's kind of what happened with the stream this morning. And we got it popping. Somebody said Anton with the silencer. This ain't no silencer, boy. This is a, this is a microphone. Had to pull some of the stuff from the stream. Or I'm sorry, from the uh, studio. In order for me to be able to have better audio. I mean, this audio is cool, but I like it better with all of the official stuff and the official audio. So that's what we're doing. What's up, friends and family? What's going on? How y'all feeling this morning? Or this evening? This good evening. Good evening. How are y'all feeling this evening? Do y'all feel great? Do y'all feel awesome? I appreciate y'all for rocking out with me. This up a little bit. And put that up a little bit. We got a makeshift thing going. I'll be glad when I get my chairs. Honestly, I really don't even want to use this. I don't want to use this. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that over there. I'm not going to use that. I actually like just talking into the computer without having a microphone. Because I got to talk into a microphone when I'm on a Millionaire Morning Show. And then I'll pull that out if I decide that, if I decide to, if anybody calls into the show, then I'll pull out the microphone because it makes it easier for me to be able to have a conversation with you guys. Trap says, I'm tra- Trap says, I'm tired. I'm preparing to travel. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Universal Travels is in the building. Who the best trap? Is it Universal Trappers or is it Trap and Slay? Uh, Wendell Kilgore says, what's good, AD, ready for the good news? Yeah, man, let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Thank you, Wendell, for holding me down. Also, I'm technically Tim is in the building. I'm technically, technically Tim says, word around town is AD's hairline got the stream sniped. (laughs) (laughs) Off the airwaves, we still let you know. Why people don't think that I can grow grow hair? Man, I can grow hair. You going to Atlanta? Man, listen, bro. I can grow hair. I don't care what y'all say. Y'all can sit here and act like I can't grow hair. I can grow hair. Corey Holcomb is about to end Lil Reese's career tonight. Too much beef, man. Too much beef, honestly. That don't get tiring, man. It really do get tiring. But we gonna react to the different things and see what's happening out here in the streets. Listen, I'm... I'm I appreciate y'all. I think that the Millionaire Morning Show is going really, really awesome. Let me say this also before we get started with the show. And again, the link I think is pinned to the top of the chat for anybody that will have a disagreement 
or any, you know what I'm saying, anybody that want to debate or anything like that, I always give people the opportunity to do so. And shout out to my dog Kojak, shout out to Yakar, shout out to Trap, shout out to all of my people that's in the building. Um, people, people keep saying stuff like, oh man, you know, we need to focus on the money and stuff like this. So like when I, when I drop a video on the Anton Daniels channel, yo, yeah, you going in OG, but let's get to the money. Listen, don't y'all realize that I got a whole nother platform that's dedicated to politics, money, news, and all of that? I got a whole platform called the Millionaire Morning Show, and we got the Patreon that's dedicated to doing whatever it is that we do from a business perspective. If y'all want to get the money side of me, if y'all want to go in and start talking about the resources, then y'all more than welcome to be able to go on the Millionaire Morning Show and talk about that. If we start getting into other things, it's the Anton Daniels channel. If we start talking about popular culture, then we're going to go in about popular culture on the After Hours channel. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, make sure that y'all get into these other platforms so that y'all can get the other side of whatever it is that we're talking about. All right? Josh? Josh. Josh. Josh going once, Josh going twice. Gotta let you go, Josh. All right, let's let's get into the show. Um, let's get to it, y'all. All right, so the first, where y'all want to start at? I'm thinking that we can start with Dame and get him out of the way. I don't know how Dame and Dash continues to end up on my on my radar, but I'm thinking that we can get get Dame out the way. Let him get his clap back on uh, Steve Stout, and then just go from there. Y'all, y'all thinking that we can get Dame up out of the way? I think we should get Dame up out of the way. <sighs> what up, Messi? I think we should get Dame out of the way and just go ahead and 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 get to that Dame Dash talking about Steve Stout. All right, let's go ahead and get to Dame Dash, y'all. Let's get him on up out of the way, get him up out of here. Plus, I know that somebody is going to probably disagree with me. You, didn't tell you don't like Dame Dash? No, I'm just objective, and I just call a spade a spade. Um, yeah, messy. I talked about it. I talked about it. Let's just Okay, mess. Well, let's just get it out of the way so we can focus on all of the other stuff. All right? Let's get to it. Let's get to it. And I'll be reading Super Chats throughout the show and holding y'all down, so I appreciate y'all continuing to rock out with me. Um, bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Look at Dame's cover photo. Look at, the, look at the cover photo that he got for Steve Stout. They don't do no editing. They just start getting their audio together and they just sit there. Download American New Network. Best network going out. Share. Number one trended at all times. What is up with the audio of this shit? Tends to make people uncomfortable. And I'm doing things that I've never done before. It doesn't make me uncomfortable. It makes me look forward to what's going to happen. So, and then I look at like... The amount of exposure or damage that there is, like usually when I'm in trouble when it comes to a company, I'm in debt about a couple of million dollars because that's when like you run out of money and then you have to like when you sell your company. The audio of this is very, very distressed. Okay, so let's pass on Dane for now. We'll get back to that later. <laughs> Yo, how, how do they expect for us to to download an application or whatever and a production is they don't gonna got no post production let's let's we're not gonna criticize that we we gonna get to it um i'll see if i can get the audio cleaned up for y'all let's talk about meat mill and dj academics let's start let's start there all right 
We'll get to Dame later. Let's start at Meek Mill. So, Meek Mill and, and DJ Academics has been beefing for a very long time, apparently, and they've been going back and forth and, you know, all of that stuff. And so, let's start there. And we'll come back to Dame Dash if I can get the audio right and get that fixed. And then we'll talk about that. Let me see if I can get this Meek Mill and Dame. Uh, Dame. Meek Mill and DJ Academics. I, I just don't believe in long-term beef, man. I, I just, I don't understand beef. There is no real winners in beef. Let's get into this. Uh, look at the back paddling reform boy yet again. He know that we finna call the governor tomorrow. And look what he says. It's entertainment. I said, how much y'all want to admit I got that reform? I'm gonna get that reform shit stopped for that hating ass thing of me. Either you stop being a thug or be a full time activist. We gonna get a meeting with that governor over him standing next to a guy who literally who's threatening violence and acting like a killer online, but crying when he when he when he's in their presence. We can play that game too. You know what he tweeted me and said? That's why I'm actually talking reckless to you. It's Twitter entertainment. We know what you're trying to do, and the internet got your head screwed up badly. These guys are actually saying what they jealous of with me. This guy wants me dead or in jail. Philly done with you. Shaking my head. Nah. Nah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I, should, I was going to tweet him like, you'll make Philly great again. I don't care. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Meek. I, I I think I think just respectfully, you misunderstand the polls of Philly. Philly, you're acting like Philly dethroned you as king and made. That's why I'm actually talking reckless to you. It's Twitter entertainment. We know what you're trying to do. The internet got your head screwed up badly. These guys are actually saying what they jealous of with me. This guy wants me dead or in jail. Philly done with you shaking my head. Hey, before we get into this, shout out to Sierra, uh, uh, Satara, Satara A.R. Taylor. Shout out to Satara. Hey, make sure that you tune into the Millionaire Morning Show. I'll sing happy birthday to her on the Millionaire Morning Show. Um, I see y'all in the chat and y'all saying, Act is, uh, Messi said, Act is too chatty for me. Act is a vlogger. This is what he do for a living, though, Messi. So you can't necessarily hold academics accountable for using his platform to do what he do. Like, this is the way that he get his content, and it's so irregular. The thing that I'm trying to understand is if you meet Mill and you're an artist, and your job is to create records, why are you spending the majority of your time why is he spending the major why is Meek Mill spending the majority of his time on Twitter? Yo, I'm not about to sit here and do this to you all day. I ain't on this type of time. I'm not doing this all day to you. I'm gonna do the thing that I'm great at, and that's how I show my haters. The way that I respond to haters is with success. I want to get another bag, I want to become greater. I'm not gonna go back and forth with you. I don't want to debate with you. The way that I show that I'm great is by continuing to be successful. Me king. I am not a king of Philly. I'm only a media entity. What Philly has said, Philly doesn't have to be done with ACK or start with ACK. What Philly has unilaterally said is they're tired of being blackballed and not having the same opportunity as people from other cities. Don't talk about what Philly's idea of academics is. Talk about how Philly feels about being given a chance, a platform, and what Philly felt you have done while you held that position and the ball you didn't pass to others and how they feel you actively blocked other people. I will say that I downloaded Meek Mill latest uh, EP. I think it was like six songs or something like that. And um, I listened to the whole thing. I listened to the whole thing. I listened to, to 
I listened to Meek's entire EP, which this week I downlo- downloaded Boss Man d Hey, And that Boss Man d goes so hard. I ain't even going to cap. I didn't download Meek Mill's latest EP. I just played it. I streamed it through uh, Apple Play. And if I'm just being absolutely honest, that junk was trash, bro. Like, it just didn't hit. It's called Heathen Heathenism. Well, five, I think it's five songs. Oh, it's five songs. It's five songs. It's called Heathenism. All right? That junk did not hit. That junk did not hit. I did not download that junk. I did not keep that junk inside of my, my streams. I don't know if he just losing his edge. I don't know if he really don't have a pulse of what. Uh, may, you know, a lot of times when you hungry, like when you hungry, you you got a whole nother dedication to your craft and stuff. I think that a lot of these guys get too rich. They get too rich. They experience a level of success. They don't know what it feels like to be back in the trenches or or. You know, to have that hunger for more. Look, when you when you trying to get it, you gonna get it. Like you got a whole nother whole nother thing on you. And I got that hunger right now. Like, I don't know. I just it just never left me. Like the hunger to continue to win, and maybe it's just because I know that I'm not at the top or I'm just having, you know, a minimal amount of success or whatever. But I got that dog in me right now, and that's why y'all see me work so hard is because I genuinely want to win even more than I'm winning right now. Like, I just feel like, oh, man, it ain't enough. I need bigger. I need better. I need more and all of this stuff. But that meek, it just ain't hitting, bro. It it ain't hitting the way that it should be, bro. Okay. I understand that you're over here now trying to play victim, saying that this guy wants me dead or in jail. But you tweeted out your damn self, sir. You're willing to die. But I guess what you're trying to say now is all satire. That's not going to stop us from calling the governor. We're going to call him tomorrow. Okay? <laughs> We're going to have a hotline going on. I'm going to put it on my story. Make sure everybody call that motherfucker. Okay? We're going to call your governor because him standing next to a low-life level scum like you, while you tweet out one side of your mouth about how you will spin blocks, got switches, got Dracos, will kill niggas, Pull up the niggas' house, piss on their steps. You got a million dollars to wipe people's families off the map. You cannot be in the same breath. Then look in the other way, in the other side of your mouth, saying how much the prison system is unfair because a nigga who does A deserves to be in jail. But you ain't the guy who do A. You just keep saying it. So you know what we're going to do? Just like how you told the governor that I'm responsible for murders, we're going to give you the choice. You either stop doing that we're gonna make- hey, check this out. Carl Smith says, have you ever considered a show based on the good things in our culture? Tune into the Millionaire Morning Show. Tune into the Millionaire Morning Show, and we have discussions based off of how you can continue to level up and become much more successful and how it comes back to the money. Listen, man. How about y'all start a platform and you do all of the great things that's great for the culture? I personally think that the culture is trash. And so I like to hold accountable to people that's continuing to pro, uh, promote the trash. And then I put the medicine inside of the candy. Okay. Make sure you stop. Like it's over for that. Okay. Stop tweet like a killer. Or you could tweet like a killer and say his jokes, but you're not going to be sitting next to the fucking governor. You're going to pick one. Then we're giving you an ultimatum. You can't, you can't be a activist in the daytime. And a goddamn villain in the nighttime. What you All think right. this is, nigga? Gotham City? No, nigga. You got to pick a goddamn side. Are you a killer? Or are you an activist? That is the question I will continue to ask you. And I'm going to ask the mayor. Michael Rubin is a private businessman at this point. I don't have nothing to ask him. They don't care as long as you make their them their, their iced coffees and their lat- lattes and, you know what I mean, you fix them their drinks and bunny hop all over the place like a good boy. What's up, Miss what's up, Jennifer? What up, everybody that just joined into the chat? I think that gangsters are losing it, and me and academics has proven, proven it, but I'm going I'm to get to that. We saw you even bunny hopping on the, on the radar freestyle. It's okay. 
Of course he's going to like you. Maybe you're giving motherfucking Robert Kraft the rugged tug he used to get at those spots. We got no problem with you and the couple white billionaires you got going on, right? But you know who we do got a problem with? Anytime you stand next to an elected official, law enforcement, or anybody else, and you try to act like you're the epitome of what injustice on a prison reform level looks like. You went to jail for popping a wheelie boy. Stop it, okay? <laughs> you're acting like you didn't have... Rock Nation show up to court every single time. They wrote, they wrote, they, you damn near had the FBI investigate your goddamn judge because you were crying saying it was on Facebook. And if anybody disagrees with me, the link is pinned to the top of the chat for you to be able to come up here and say what you want to say. You had every opportunity to prevent your situations, had the best lawyers in the whole world. You had Jay-Z, Desiree Perez was at every hearing. You're not the person who's the normal person in Philadelphia, who's a normal person in Pennsylvania, who doesn't have enough money. You talking about all that shit you're doing. You're not the same person. You're not the example. You can't be the poster boy, especially, especially when. Yeah, boss man is hard. D-Lo is, that, he, he next up. D-Lo is, that, that album hit, bro. That album hit hard. You keep tweeting how you're down to kill people. Nope. Those Wins and losses is not Meek's best album. Meek's best album is Championships, in my opinion. Championships, when he got out of jail, he was rapping like he was hungry. Hungry. He, was, he had all of the right beats. He, it was, it, he had a moment. Listen, Championships should have got Meek up out of there. All he had to do was keep the momentum and rap. Rap. Drop albums. Drop. If Meek dropped as much as Currency dropped, and he was as hungry as Currency and all of them was... And he had that same hunger and he continued to evolve his flow and evolve the subjects that he's talking about to continue to keep his audience engaged. A lot of these rappers, they don't realize that the person that grew up with you or the person that was listening to you, they're in a different space in their life. I'm in a different space, right? I don't want to keep hearing the same thing from the same rapper rapping the same thing a hundred different times. It's the same thing. I want, we want to grow with you. We want to see your evolution to becoming a businessman to like Ross. Rick Ross is the perfect example of it. If you really want to be honest, regardless of whether or not you agree with how it is that he started off or whatever. Ross has evolved. Khaled has evolved. All of these people have completely evolved in their flow. They evolve in a content. They evolve. And the things like that they talk about from the first, Meek is still talking about the same thing that he was talking about when he came into the game with trying to capture that same moment from the intro. Tweets. That's what incites violence. When you say you're going to come to somebody's block and wipe their family off the map, you think that nigga ain't going to pick up a gun? You think academics interview will make him pick up a gun? You think when you're threatening to, 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 to get rid of his very existence, a guy with all the resources in the world, you have 20 million goddamn followers. When you say that, there's a crash out motherfucker who says a million dollars. They never seen 10,000. You think that person ain't going to say, bro. When you got 10,000, when you got 20 million followers and you can't get 6,000 people to stream your album. What's the point of having 20, 20 million followers? That's like having a million subscribers on YouTube. But you can't even resonate with a thousand people. I've seen people with a, with, with a million subscribers on YouTube and they can't get they can't get 500 people. They can't get 143 people in the live stream. What's the point? What's the point of having what's the point of having all of these people following you in all of these live streamers when you can't even when you can't even pull an audience or you can't even leverage that audience to, do, to get engaged with what, what it is that you got going on? All these things. They, they don't have 15 places like you. You live in Atlanta. You don't live in Philadelphia no more. When you drove to, when you drove to Philadelphia at 2 a.m., you have a condo, a high-rise condo in motherfucking Manhattan. You drove your car that you probably haven't driven it in so long because you get chauffeured around this place. It had the check engine light on. You drove to Philly. I did the fucking map quest, nigga. That's three hours of driving at 2 o'clock to act like you were spinning in a place you don't live. Why? That's not inciting violence, nigga. You think you could do that? And niggas there to be like, oh, no, it was just me. You didn't come to do a concert. You could have tried to. How about you give a concert to the kids? How about you, you do a free concert and try to give the proceeds? That's how you're supposed to show back up to your city. 
Not at two o'clock. Acting like you know what everybody in the city said? They never seen you, nigga. You rode around in a car that nobody knows with tents. Acting like you were spinning. They ran three red lights getting the fuck on out of there. Why? Because you want to cause dysfunction. You don't live in them places. You don't live on Birch Street. I don't care how much times you rap about it. You don't live there. What up, you don't city live on Catherine Block no more either. What up, city champion? The same people you saying RIP to, everybody comes back to me with a story saying how much you could have helped them by the same attention you're giving to me. The same attention you're giving to me because you're obsessed, my nigga. Thanks I for the new subscribes. Make sure y'all hit a like for the out. Damn, the likes is low on this mug. What are y'all doing? Y'all don't hit a like when y'all come into the live stream? Come on, man. Let's rock out, bro. Make money off of your stupid ass. You're the dumbest one. You're the biggest one. You're the biggest clown in the circus. The artists in your city wish you gave them this attention, nigga. I get it out of you like that. Pause. Not no ditty shit. You sit up tweeting at me every fucking day. I do, I do agree with somebody in the chat that said, uh, somebody said, act need to chill out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jai said it. Jai says, act need to, need to chill. Been saying the same things about week, meek, meek for a week now. Move on. Home. I agree, man. This junk is getting tired, bro. I thought that he was going to say something new. What I like to do is I like to look at this stuff and, and, and observe it and react to it based off of the idea that, okay, he's going to say something new or it's a new evolution in the beef. But at some point, this junk just get old. It just get tired. It's like, and I get it. Like, I get that it's entertaining for his fans or maybe his live streamers or the people that watch his live stream is rocking with it. Like, oh, yeah, you know, getting, getting, getting. You know, it may be exciting at the time that he doing it to his community or whatever, but this doesn't get old, bro. It absolutely get old. I think that both of them need to just grow up at some point. At least at least grow up to the point to where they stop caring about what the other one doing. Meek Mill is over here looking at every stream that Ak is doing. Ak is following every tweet that Meek Mill is, is putting up in order to try to react to it. I almost feel like they working together. You know what I'm saying? I almost feel like they're working together. I, it's just, it's just, it's, it's getting corny. You know, it's like, oh, and, and I understand that you don't like people. Man, it's people that I don't like. It's people that I don't like that's on the internet. And you will never, ever, ever hear me ever mention a name uh, you will never hear nothing come out of them i'm not giving them no shine i'm not giving them no, no visibility i don't want to talk about them i don't want to go back and forth about them i don't care like my my biggest thing is if i really don't like you then i'm not gonna mention you if i really don't like you and i really don't fuck with you and it's a difference between you know what i'm saying going back with somebody you know, going back and forth with somebody because they said something negative about you and okay, all right, I'm gonna react to what they react to or I'm gonna address them or whatever. Cause I don't really not like that person. I just disagree with what they saying and maybe they got beef with me or something, but I don't give a fuck because you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, okay, that's fine. Let me give them some chance some visibility. We gonna bring you to the front of the congregation or whatever. But if I don't really like you, if I really, really don't like you, I'm not fucking with you. I'm not going to mention you. I don't have nothing to say to you. None of that. And part of the reason of that is, and this is not me, this is just the general sentiment of what I would think people are, is if you really want to get at somebody, you're not tweeting them. If you really, if you really got disdain for somebody, you're not going to mention them. You're not going to talk about them. Because you don't, you don't even want people to know that you feel that way about them. Because if anything was to ever really happen... You don't really want to be tied to it. Not saying that you ever the person that do something to them, but I don't ever want to be tied to somebody if anything was to ever happen to them because I don't want people to think that me and them got smoked. So why would I ever mention anybody and say anything about them if I don't care about them in real life? Like I genuinely don't like you. I don't fuck with you. I don't like you. I don't care if anything happened to you. 
And, and again, that's not me because I don't have no beef with nobody. You know what I'm saying? There's people that I don't like, but I don't genuinely have no beef with nobody. Like, I'm I'm 100% cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm, it may be people that I don't necessarily care for their platform or I don't care how, you know what I'm saying, or the message that they spend to the community, but I don't genuinely have no beef with nobody. I don't, I don't have nothing. It's people that I don't like, but it's not people that I have beef with. But if you genuinely have beef with somebody in real life, and you really, in its own, man, I'm not mentioning them. I'm not ever going to say nothing. I ain't never going to say nothing. I ain't going to mention nothing. I'm just going to keep it. I'm going to keep it chill. I ain't, you ain't never going to see me with a cell phone. I don't want, my car ain't going to be nowhere near them. None of that. You're not going to be able to do no geofencing. You ain't going to be able to pull up my location to see if I was by them. I'm not going to text about them. I'm not going to talk on the phone about them. I'm not going to tell no friend that I don't fuck with them. I ain't going to text a, a friend and say, man, none of that. Nothing. I'm not going to mention them. If anybody mentioned them around me, I'm leaving the room. I don't want nothing to do. I don't want nothing tied to them. I don't want to be close to where they at. You're not going to do none of that. You're not going to be able to ping me off no cell phone towers. Nothing. Nothing. No IMAS in the messages. No thinking that I'm, my, my shit is encrypted by going with Signal or WhatsApp. Nothing. I don't want nothing to do with you. I, don't, I ain't saying your name. I don't have nothing nothing about you. Don't come to me and say nothing about it. I'm, I'm cool. I ain't tweeting about you. I'm not sneak dissing you. I ain't doing none of that shit. If I really, really got beef with you, I ain't about to be tw Twitter finger like like Nick Mill is doing it. It's, it's, it's tired. That shit is tired. And we too old for that shit. So I just think that they need to let it go. Or I think that one of them need to let it go, regardless of, of what the other one is doing. And just keep winning. That's the sweetest revenge. The sweetest revenge is just to win across the board. That's just my personal opinion of it. Let me pull up this Dame Dash situation. Let's see if I can, because I tried to fix the audio behind the scenes. Tried to fix the audio behind the scenes, so we're going to see. We're going to see what's happening with Dame. Again, if anybody has any disagreement with me, you're more than welcome to be able to pull up. Pull up. Uh, the link is pinned to the top of the chat, and we can go from there. All right? I'm going to see if I can do a better job with Dame shit than Dame did. You know what I'm saying? I may not work, but we'll try it out. We'll see what's happening. Let me see if I can fast forward it. Money, and then you have to, like, when you sell your company, you'll sell it, and half of that money goes to whatever debt you had. It pays the problems. You're back to that. And... You're doing your own thing. You got your own lane. You, you know, you got an explosive career. Why is it that people still tend to have so much to say about you? Uh, we, we, if you if, I mean, you've been gone we, for so long. We spoke chilling. about it last time, right? I'm the person that people copy. Mm -hmm. So I'm the person that has an idea, but won't just give my idea to another culture for money to make it happen fast. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I start a trend and someone wants to take credit for it, mm -hmm. you know, they know that if I ever get to that kind of um, level of funding, not the kind of funding, because when, when, when somebody, you hear like somebody like, for example, I was like, yo, I made a bid with a group for Revolt for, you know, 210 million. Oh, Obvi oh, oh. Obviously, yeah, you know, but, but obviously that's not um, me putting up my own 10 million. It's about being savvy enough to go raise 10 million. Mm -hmm. So when you hear like a famous person's name or someone's name, even like a Byron Allen, like, oh, he's just put a bid in for 6 billion. That does not mean that they put up 6 billion. That meant that they were savvy enough to get enough people to believe in an idea where they'll invest the money. Mm -hmm. You understand what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I don't do that really. I make a tangible company first. Like I didn't get a deal for Rockefeller until we went gold. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. no one believes in my ideas because they're too far ahead of the game. So when I have an idea like a liquor company, like think about who was doing vodka first, Armandale. Armandale. But again, I, I didn't, you know, I, I wouldn't take, and I'm not disrespecting homie's deal or nothing, but you know, what comes just look like, it didn't seem like he owned it. It seemed like, you know, he was a spokesperson for it. Mm -hmm. 
that that's not what I do. I don't give up my ideas and then not be able to own them. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, it's just that's just me because then people start telling you what to do. And yeah, there's like you can get expenses paid and this, that, and the third. But then I just can't work with who I want to work with. That's what I can't work with who I want to work with. Mm -hmm. Hey, can you tell the mayor I'll call him right back that I'm filming? But you know, I would definitely stop to talk to him. But I'm on. I'm. I'm. I'm broad. You know, when that just happened right there, when that just happened right there, I started getting a, a ring in my ear. No lie, on everything, on everything. When I when I just got, I have a ring that's, it's a ring that's happened in my ear. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's any kind of correlation. <laughs> that was the weakest shit that I didn't seen somebody do in a long time time come on man you know i'm okay with just continue just moving on to a whole nother honestly Cause I don't, I don't, <laughs> I'm okay with moving on to an entirely different subject. Cause this shit is lame though. <laughs> this shit is, that was, that was so, hold on man, let me rewind that shit. That's what I can't work who I want to work with. Hey, can you tell the mayor I'll call him right back that I'm filming? But you know, I would definitely stop to talk to him. But I'm on, I'm, I'm, I'm broadcast. See that's. <laughs> oh my show, my fucking god! <laughs> Hey man, tell Obama man to hit me up later, bro. I'm I would call him, but I'm filming right now. Just tell him to hit me up later, fam. <laughs> oh fuck! Come on, man. Let's let's just. Let's just keep moving, man. God. I want to get to the Steve Stout part, bro. That's, that's so, the big talk the, right there. It's, it's just the way the world runs. But to be honest, I'm sick of these niggas. I'm sick of it. Because you would think that after a while, niggas would leave you alone. But this consistent thing where people feel comfortable saying that they're going to do whatever they want to do or can do to keep me out of business talk bad about me to other people, you know, come together and make a certain narrative and then get on TV and then have the nerve to speak on it and not, it, it makes it too obvious. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, I'm sick of that shit. So, okay, yeah. Who are we talking about? I'm talking, well, as of recently, it's Steve Stout. What is, yeah, what, so hold on, hold on, y'all. Mayor just hit me up. Hey, can you tell, can y'all tell the mayor that I'll call him right back? No, I'm on a live stream, y'all. I'm on I'm on after hours and he know that I'm on after hours. I don't even know why he calling me right back. Hey, tell the tell the mayor that I'ma call him. Tell Tiffany Hingard I'ma call her right back, yo. Tell Tiff I said what up to. And tell her I said hold off on doing any other interviews. I'ma call her right back, bro. All right, we're gonna get back, y'all. We're gonna get back to this. Let's get back to this stream, y'all. Give us the the backstory on that. Like well, I mean, what's up with that? The problem with, I think, my relationship with Steve Stout was sort of the way I was introduced to him. Mm -hmm. I, I've never had a certain level of respect for him. And, and the reason why is 
back when we started to kick it with Biggie Smalls, and you could ask D-Rock and C's and all of them, but they used to be, I guess Steve Stout used to be around a lot. You know, I don't know, why, I, maybe because it was for Sony or whatever, and Steve Stout was up under Tommy Matola. And that, that was always Steve Stout's model, is to get with a powerful white man and Paul's just become his nutsack. Hey, Mario Elliott says, check this out. Mario Elliott says, Anton, he was talking about Demary Gary, which is his close friend. Okay, cool. So why, why did he have to play it the way that he played it? Because he wanted us to know during the recording that he know the mayor of Gary. And so it was important for him to say that out loud. Hey, tell him I'm recording. I'm on a live stream right now. And I know he want to talk to me right now. But it's very important. And I'm going to get back to him because I got some other things that I'm working on. Tell the mayor that I'm going to call him back. Nigga, it's Gary, Indiana. I can get in touch with that nigga right now myself. And I don't even know him. Come on, man. Hey, hey, hey. Biden hit you up. Hey, tell, tell Prez I said what's up. Oh, y'all want to know who Prez is? President of the United States. That's it. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Stop, bro. Like, he would, he would be the guy that'll say, look, I can get to the culture for free. So he had Tommy Matola in his pocket at Sony. And he had um, Jimmy Iovine in his pocket at Interscope. Literally, Rockefeller was going to be at Interscope. I went and met with Ted, uh, Jimmy Iovine. We were going to do the deal. And this nigga literally fucked that deal up, uh, Steve Stout. And, and that happened. And same thing as Sony. I was dealing with Ron Sweeney. And then Tommy Matola goes over there, <laughs> messes that deal up. But anyway, the way I met him was they were always talking about him. And I'd be like, they'd be disrespecting him. And, and they were like, yo. This dude, Steve Stout, Steve Stout, he's always in the office. He's pussy, blah, blah, blah. And they had a picture of him with a wig on with lipstick. You're lying, man. So apparently he had fell asleep in the studio, and they put a wig on him and lipstick. And I'm like, well, did he wake up swinging on you? And they're like, hell no. We just laughed at him and shit. So that was, was where I, I, my first interaction with him. And, and then I, I, I met him, and, 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 you know, it was whatever. And we... At that time, then that wasn't an interaction, my nigga. That's just you want. See, you see how corny this shit is, man. Listen, we we not gonna even keep going. We not we not gonna sit here and try to be completely objective about the shit. We just gonna call a lame a lame, man. I don't give a fuck what y'all think about Dame. This nigga's lame, bro. He lame all the way. I ain't never bit my tongue for nobody, bro. But I've been honestly trying to just be objective and keep it and, and keep, give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't give a fuck what y'all think happened. I don't care how, how President Rockefeller that, throwing bottles, all of that shit don't mean nothing to me. I'm talking about right here, right now in 2024. That was not even a fucking interaction. That was you just wanting to tell a story about a nigga. That's you being a bitter old fucking 50 year old man wanting to tell a story about a nigga that's winning. That's all it is. That was my first interaction with him. A nigga showed me a picture of him with a wig on it because they drew it on him when he was asleep. Okay, so they played a practical joke on a nigga and he was mature enough not to fuck up his relationships and get emotional like you, nigga, and then throw his whole career out the window. But instead, this nigga had Maxwell singing at his wedding and Kanye West grabbing the mic and doing a freestyle of this shit while you was over here, while you over here in some fucking... Pro kids, nigga, and talking shit about a nigga, that, and, and you still reminiscing over Jay-Z, and Jay-Z ain't never mentioned you in an interview. Come on, man. That's some corny shit, bro. That's my first interaction with him. Nigga, you ain't even, that ain't even an interaction. You just wanted to tell a nigga, you just wanted to say what you wanted to say about a nigga. That's the real, that's real. That's the real shit. I mean, come on, man. If we just going to call it like it is, and let's just be 100% what it is. He wanted to tell a story that wasn't even a real interaction, and you want to try to try to say a nigga is lame because somebody, because Shannon Sharp asked you a question, asked Steve Stout a question. He told the truth. It took him less than two minutes to do so, and now this nigga's butt hurt. That's the reality. We were all like young executives. I remember I'm in my 20s, early 20s, and... I was telling him about what I was about to do with DJ Clue. I was going to sign DJ Clue and make a compilation album and put out the make, make a, I was like the first guy to put out a mixtape as a real album.
Mm -hmm. And I got wind that he went behind my back and offered Clue a deal, and Clue was about to sign the deal. So I literally, with you know, a lot of Rockefellers and a couple of people from the block, went up in that office while they were sitting around the table about to sign. I had to sit down and say, now, what type of time, you know, you bug it. Like, bro, you're not going to just do that. Like, you know, come and take my ideas, know I'm going to do a deal, go around my back and do a deal. So literally I had to take those pens and put the Rockefeller deal right there. And part of the conversation is like, yo, like, you know, you were do that. My first interaction was niggas be putting wigs on you. And, and put lipstick on you, and you, and you don't, don't do, do that, shit. They don't do shit. So he's obviously not a street guy, but he's playing with street people. You know what I mean? So why do you think they didn't have the level of respect? They like, you know, because they ain't gonna try everybody like that. Because Steve is a trifling guy. So he, like, even in my conversations with him, and I'm not lying to you, I'm not hating or nothing, but like, he would tell me, like, yo, I hate niggas. Whenever a nigga say I'm not hating or nothing, and then they start to hate on a nigga, when a nigga preface a conversation and I'm going to say I'm not hating or nothing. I hate niggas. He would tell me that. Fuck niggas. That was his model. And I just think maybe because he got abused by black people a lot, he didn't mind selling them out. So what he's made a business of is getting cool with white people and then getting people like Jay-Z to put their name on a Budweiser can. And that's what I was against. I'm like, how you going to be about champagne? Why would you have that man do a deal with Budweiser? That's below. It's just, again, it's like, and also a brand that's known to be for racist people. Yeah. So well, why would you put Jay-Z's full name on a $40 sneaker? So, like, I, no disrespect to Jay, but this was the last time I saw Steve, I had this conversation with him. I'm like, why would you put Jay's name on a $40 sneaker? Jay hasn't been able to sell anything with his name on it since then you gotta remember there was a time that whatever jay wore everybody wore he was the yeah, fly guy after after them stupid ass collar shirts yankee hats <laughs> he been not known as the fly guy <laughs> no no more no disrespect to jay and then proceeds to talk all about the disrespect for jay while acting like you're not disrespecting jay and then he wonder why don't nobody do business with him after. Because see, y'all even y'all all keep talking about, man, ain't nobody ever said that they ever did bad business. How come people are stop are not still doing business with him except for exploiting him when it's an opportunity to buy his his one third of Rockefeller? That's my question. See, at any point, I can I can pull up anybody that I've ever done business with because I did good business with him and they still fuck with me and they want to do business. Is people that still hit me up today, your time. That's the reason why I got the position that I'm in right now in corporate America is because somebody hit me up and say, yo, fam, come check out what it is that we do. And now we're going to make you an offer that you can't refuse. And then I choose whether or not I want to rock with it or turn it down. How come nobody still do business with him that, that did business with him? Fuck all of that other shit that ain't nobody saying a negative about him. That's just because motherfuckers... Ain't as stupid as him, and they don't want to be looked at looked at as lepers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No disrespect, but you know yeah, yeah, we no lost disrespect. a lot of money at Rockware with that because at Rockware they made me order a bunch of them shits to sell a year later. I'm like, yo, they're gonna be played out. So I ended up with like forty million dollars worth of fucking dress shirts and cufflinks with cuffling holes that we couldn't sell. So you give them bitches away. That's why I was like, I'm selling my interest. But the thing about it is what I don't like about it is he's been that person, Steve Stout, that when things were in the newspaper about me and Jay, and I'd go to like a LA read and say, yo, what's that all about? I'd be like, Steve put that in the paper. When I go to Leo Cohen and be like, yo, what's that all about? Steve put that in the paper. Stock Club came out on Monday, fam. Go into the Patreon and check it out, bro. Star Club, the link to the link to go and look at the live stream is is right there in the Patreon, fam. Y'all not checking the Patreon? Make sure y'all tap check the Patreon. Talking about you still waiting on the latest Star Club. It's up. It was always Steve, and then even I look even to this year, Un gets on Vlad and says Steve came to me and said that we have a conspiracy. We're gonna sit down and we're gonna put Damon out of business. He said it. So there was actually conversations and conspiring to put me out of business. 
to 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 make a narrative to make my name seem like it's something because you got to think about what I heard because I didn't look at the interview because I'm I'm it's just like I don't want to be triggered but what the clips I saw first of all it was only a two minute part that he talked about your family because Shannon Sharp asked you didn't look at the interview but you seen the clips I didn't look at the interview either but I seen the clips where he was talking about you. Well, he's talking on business that's not his. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Speaking on another man's business. And the shit he said was like, you're, you're, number one, not that it's true, but what he said was, I'm running around the world with women taking pictures with cameras. Like, since when do black people be mad about something like that? You didn't see the interview, but you seen the clips. And you seen the part that he talked about you. Okay. So you watched the interview, my nigga. He's saying word for word what Steve South said about him in the interview. He's saying word for word what Steve South said about him in the interview, but you didn't watch another interview. Got it. Got it. Got it. Number one. But number two, that means you were so mad that you couldn't get girls that you were actually 20 years later saying that that's a reason to fuck a business up. But in mm -hmm. actuality, you could look at it on International Grizzly on America New. What I was doing was I was opening up rockware in Europe. And at that time, that's not what Steve said. That's not what Steve said. That's what Steve Stout basically broke down was that it was people that was grinding and hustling and that was back in the offices working. And then while he was out and about frolic and across the entire globe, he would come back and then belittle them and talk shit about the work that they did like he was in the office putting up, putting up shots with him while they was grinding for his fucking company. That's what Steve Stout was basically em 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 emphasizing about how Dame Dash was operating, which ultimately uh, soured relationships and ruined the company because he would come back and start talking about motherfuckers as though he had been in there working and he understood it, you know, the, the type of effort that they put into when they was doing when they was doing business. He ain't say nothing about I couldn't get girls and all of this other shit, man. Come on, man. This shit is lame. How much more we got? We gonna watch this, y'all. I'm Jay was going around saying that I'm not doing Rockware. I'm doing Sean S. Dot Carter. So I had to personally go as an executive and open up Rockware all around the world. Now, I'm not one of those guys that likes to run around with a lot of dudes. You know, you see me. Yeah, yeah. So you mad because my company is women? And when you're opening up a brand, aren't you supposed to have cameras? Yeah. Doesn't it sound like I was doing exactly what I was supposed to do? What I was doing was expanding our business. Promoting the market. Now, who are these people I was yelling at when I came back? You ever seen me on tape yelling at an artist other than Clue? And that would be just a conversation in a tone? Mm -hmm. No, you saw me yelling at Steve Stout or Lee or Cohen or Julie Greenwald. And you always stood on that. I don't, I, I, or I, I never, um, I was always fighting for the artist. So if I was yelling at somebody, it was for the artist. So when I'm yelling at somebody, I'm not yelling at somebody for me. I'm yelling at somebody for Jay. I'm yelling at somebody for Kanye. I'm yelling at somebody for Beanie Siegel. I'm yelling at somebody for Cameron. I was doing the yelling so they didn't have to. That was my job. That's what you do as a boss. I'll handle that. You know, that's why when people bring people around me, I'm like, look, if you're going to bring someone in my personal space, if you can't stand up for them, if they fuck up and you can't take care of that, do not bring them around me. I should not have to deal with that. Yeah. I'm only trusting them because of you. I'm vouching off your word. So if I'm the boss or I'm the CEO, I'm, you ain't got to do certain things. You just go be creative. It ain't for you to go do the rough stuff. Let me go do the rough stuff. So every time you see a camera of me yelling, it's at someone that's hurting a creative. But of course they're gonna try to make that the narrative. But what I'm thinking to myself when I saw that, he was so comfortable talking about another man's business in public, was what is he saying when I'm not around? So he going around being like, oh, look what Dame is doing. He's running around the world. He's getting all the girls. He's taking pictures and now he's yelling. You know what I mean? So he's the guy that's in other people's ear 
telling them that this is the reason why you shouldn't fuck with Dame. Mm. But the thing about it is Steve started out with Nas and LL Cool J. So the way we got cool was arguing about who was better. Mm -hmm. And then there was a time, and no disrespect to Nas, but I guess he got cold and was a little fucked up financially. Steve would come around and tell us all of Nas's business. Going back and forth. No, be like, yo, this nigga Nas is fucked up and whatever, and he's fucked up. He'd tell me all his, I'd be like, damn. And then the same with LL. Like, tell me shit like LL was like driving a Honda and blah, blah, blah. Like, tell me things I don't need to hear. And I'm like, I thought that was your man. Yeah. See, that's that dishonorable. Is that the reason why you slapped him for all the dishonorable shit? That <sighs> yeah, let's get to this part. He did. So what happened was, again, we used to argue about who had the better deal. No, Steve South didn't bring up Dame's name. Shannon Sharp asked him about Dame and Jay. And then Steve Stout gave his opinion and then he moved on to other things. That's what happened. Please, let's just be clear. Let's just be absolutely real. I know that y'all love Dame and that's cool and I'm with it. And ain't nobody timing y'all out or nothing like that because I like differences of opinions and stuff like that. But come on, man. Come on, man. I know you New York niggas love being from New York, but he took the L, man. Across the board, he's he took the L. J won, Ye won, Steve Stout won, Nas won, Fat Joe won. Everybody that he say that he got beef with, all of them won. In the end, they all won. Mm -hmm. And he made a bet with me about my deal for like 18, 20 grand. And, you know, I had the deal that I said I did, so he lost. And he was in the office with Jay, because this, again, this is like, nah, we were doing well. And that's what, like, Steve is one of those guys that makes a living out of getting next to famous people and then going to white people and saying, I could get them to do shit for a price. Mm -hmm. I, I could get Jay to get on Budweiser. Nobody else could. I could get Mary J. Blige to get on a bucket of chicken. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like shit like that. You, you know what I mean? Like that that was how that was his leverage is hanging around famous people, taking pictures with them, and then going to corporate people and saying, I know that guy. You know, I can get this done. I can get you. that done for you. Yeah. You know, and look at the look at the deals and the body of work that he has done. But what happened was he made a bet and he's in the office, in my office, with Jay, and cause Jay's tolerant of him, um, He's trying to throw a party with Jay and us at the Hamptons. And I'm like, I'm not throwing no party with this dude. He's like our op. You know what I'm saying? Like, why was he was, I don't even know why he's in the office. And plus, yo, bruh. And I had broke my foot. I was playing basketball with little Richie. He started uh, One Oak. Mm -hmm. And I got a little issue. I ain't going to get into that. But um, <laughs> we'll get to that later. Yeah. But um, for real. But um. <sighs> I was playing basketball at Nike Airs. I broke my foot in the Hampton, so I had a cast on. So I'm telling him, like, man, get out of here. You know, we're not doing this, that. We start arguing. And I was like, oh, so where my money at, bro? Like, you owe me 18 grand. And he said, I'm not paying you. So you know where I'm from. You yeah. can't just bet somebody and tell yeah. them you're not paying them. So I walked over, like, yo, you need to get out of here. You feel me? And he kind of jumped and shit, and I was like... Yo, I got a broken foot. And like Steve's the kind of guy that if let's say he caught me one time, my crew would tease me forever. Even if he like caught me and I beat his ass, they'll be like, yo, you let Steve Stout deck you. You know what I mean? Like Steve's the guy that gets robbed and niggas crack him in the head with a bottle he tell. And that was another thing is I never liked the fact that he told on Puff. So I'm like, bro, you try to put that man in jail. Yeah, with the um, when he hit him in the head with the bottle. Like he the you know, he did a lot of crap shit. Like even so we got the lawyer for uh Yeah, for I'll tell you, so so you know, again, I smacked him and shit. And I gave him an opportunity to have a fair one. Like, Pop smacked him and was like, yo, he asked me, he said, yo, did you just smack me? And I was like, yeah, nigga. And ain't nothing between us but the win. I'll give you a fair <laughs> whoa, one. Whoa, whoa. You slapped the shit out of him. He asked you, did you just slap him? I had a Frank Mueller left, tack, and that shit broke. I remember he uh, asked you. Oh, and my whoa. cousin Darren just closed the door, boom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it was all in there. You know, but I was like, don't touch him. Let that be, because you know I know how he is. He, tell, he calls the police. You know what I mean? He because again he had just sued Puff for that money, oh, for cracking man. him in the head with the bottle. So he really sued Puff. Tried to he testified. 
So for me, when I would see him in public, I'd be like, yo, you a snitch. You know, and even though it's not street rules, like to me, if you're going to be around street guys, then at, the you're going to have to respect a certain kind of rule. Like, you, you don't, number one, you don't try to put people in jail. No. Nah. You know, so I didn't like that. And I'd be on the, the red carpet at, at Cipriani's, like, oh, he's a rat. And, you know, people go, What's her, why? And I, and I say it, but yeah, he's a rat. You know, it, he's a rat. But to me, <laughs> that's my opinion. I mean, period. But so I smacked him, and I know that. It, it, because he's not man enough to give a fair one, and again, it's too late now. I'm 52. I don't care if you went worked out, did Tybo, we're done. You know what I'm saying? Someone is he still gonna ask you? Did you smack me? Well, th we had other interactions though. So, um, from that day on, I think since he got smacked, it's been a, a, a little sneaky kind of a thing to try to get people not to fuck with me and put things in the press. And, and if you look at his body of work, pause, like the people that he's done business with. You could ask those people what kind of guy he is. Mm -hmm. Like nobody really fucks with Steve except like certain people. You know what I mean? I think we done here. Nothing else to see. I got no more comments. I got nothing else to say. God bless. God bless, man. Real talk. Uh, Carl Oakley says... Dame's story sound like the old head with the facts, bro. With the loose Newport SIG and a four yards standing outside the Chinese store on the corner. You know what it is, Bill and Nico. I ain't even got to say nothing. I ain't got to say that. Shout out to you for the super chat. I appreciate you, Carl. I appreciate everybody that contributed to the platform. Y'all know, you know what it is, bro. I ain't even got to say nothing. God bless the community. God bless the people. Um, shout out to, to the dry snitching and all of that other shit. Like, I know some of y'all rock with it and y'all roll with it and God bless y'all. I know that. Let's get over to the yay. We're going to do yay. Y'all want to do Don Lemon or y'all want to do yay? Don Lemon talking. Interviewing Elon Musk, or y'all want to go to Yay? It's up to y'all. How y'all want to play this? <laughs> this junk is so crazy, bro. <sighs> Insane. Y'all tell me how y'all want to play it. I'm going to go get me some water, man. I want to go to yay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see y'all talking about yay. All right, we can talk about yay. Let's get yay up here. I'm sure the audio should be better. Um, yay did an interview with Big Boy. Um, and he was up there with, he said a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of clips on Instagram about Ye. So we'll go to Ye and see what he's talking about, see if we can parse through some of the stuff that he was saying and if we can get anything out of it. We'll go from there. All right. First off, man, when we think about vultures, one, vultures, two, and we understand as one for a long time. We so much together that y'all can say, we're not just doing one, we're not just doing two, we're doing three. Yeah. So when you guys come together and you say, I want you to executive produce the album, or y'all really think we could put something together, at the moment, let's say, you know, we'll be working at 3 a.m. or sleeping in, and, um, you know, I got to a point where I was, you know, Re recalibrating my whole life, uh, frustrated with a lot of the positions I've been in. And, you know, my, my focus over the past year and a half was uh, 
the music and then the clothing, mostly the shit. Yeah, I listen to Vultures, uh, Messi. I think that it's dope. I think that I really like the album. Um, I don't know. It's so weird to see how... Um, hold on, let me remove this. It's so weird to see how Ty Dolla Sign was able to come with Ye and make a much, much greater body of work than Ty Dolla Sign's own solo album, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? If anybody actually listened to Ty Dolla Sign's solo album versus what he put together with Ye, it's a, it's a completely different thing. So I really like Vultures. Um, yeah, Vultures is a dope album. Choose. So I put everything I had left into both of those. In both in both of those channels and they they end up supporting each other at the same time but ty you know, even like how like mike dean didn't work on this project mike dean was the kind of person that you could hand him something and he'll hand you a finished product back that you could decide i like this i like that that's like how ty you can give him something even like just a murmur of something <laughs> he could bring it back with the words uh, you that's called confidence. <laughs> <talent. laughs> this is called delusion. Hey man, but you singing though. Yeah, and, and the thing about it, man, is not only do you sing, mm. yay, you get a whole crowd to sing with you. Yeah. And the one thing yeah. that we do know is that when we hear you, we know it's you. You know what I'm saying? And there's a difference between well, when you can put your own imprint into something, and people know exactly what it is, then you have created something that's dear to us. You know, and so when we look at music, bro, this is when we say music is a soundtrack to our lives, too. I mean, no matter the collaboration and not ego, not speak egotistically. So I'm not going to talk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, speak egotistically. <laughs> uh, we definitely needed it. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, yeah, I could play all the instruments, I could put all the stuff together, but come, you know, you know in the studio with him, it was like taking it to a whole nother level, picking them parts. I'll come with a song, for instance, and uh, the song will be fully done as far as I'm concerned. He come back, man, change that shit like 20 times. Yeah, no, not and yet. And like it go from like mm -hmm. a dance music song to back to me. Like if you would have heard the first back to me, mm -hmm. it was like completely different. He took my song, put it in the ASR 10, which is a keyboard with a sampler, slowed it down, rocked the sample like that. Then we get, that was in Japan. Then we get to Italy, we play it again. We got some words to it. Then we going through some drums. He picked a whole different thing. I'm like thinking it's not it. All of a sudden it's crazy. Mm. So yeah, it, it, does, know, it does get worse before it gets better. It's like right. when girls have like <laughs> plastic surgery like that, when they get like the BBL, they gotta like drive in the car and like uh, what they kind of like Sit on, on pads, knees. hurting each other. No, they, they can't even sit on <laughs> pads and stuff. They definitely can't get on spirit. Right. They gotta. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, have y'all ever seen any of those? <laughs> have y'all ever seen any of those videos? That be on Instagram or TikTok of the chicks that be uh like it be a like if you fly back from Miami or something like that, and it be a whole bunch of women on a spirit flight and they all on their knees facing the front of the seat because they can't actually sit down because they got a BBL and they wasn't down there long enough to actually recover. If you go down to Miami and you get a B <laughs> shit, we so far off subject. If you go down to Miami and you rent out certain Airbnbs, like if you talk, if you, um, if you go on Airbnb and you go to certain Airbnbs in Miami, they will tell you in the description or in the, in the unit before you rent it, it'll say like no surgery, no BBLs, no recoveries, no none of that stuff. And I, and I'm assuming, I'm assuming because It'd be so, like, so much blood and so nasty. Man, listen, bro. The, the type of stuff that women have to go through on a recovery of a BBL, I don't even know why y'all do that anyway. Y'all be suffering. Y'all be suffering. And y'all be in pain and messed up and stuff. I Look, for y'all to go through that just to be looking like ants is insane to me. 
for y'all to go do that and then be looking like ants afterwards is crazy to me. But let's continue. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so it, it get that like <laughs> that moment right there. But then waking up and she gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, I be like tell Ty like a song like the BBL is almost ready. Right. It's almost ready for the summer. <laughs> Does he say that to you? Like, has it? Do y'all also not only compliment each other? Can you tell each other what's not working? And can you put Ye back in the booth? Booth. Nope. Oh, and sure. can can Ye put you back? in I the tried booth? to remove the curse in a bunch of times, and he was like. <laughs> I was like, oh, what do you think? At the last one, I'm like, what do you think we make this thing all clean? He's like, no. <laughs> you don't do what I'm feeling right now. Right? Jesus, there's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I ain't seen. But I, Jesus still is. This is what I'm feeling right now. Are you in that space where you're comfortable enough to say, this is where I am right now. I'm still a man of God. I'm, Jesus still is king. But this is vultures right now. This is where I am. It is, but I, you know, I, I have my issues with Jesus. There's a lot of stuff I went through that I prayed and I ain't see Jesus show up. So I had to put my, uh, my experience in this world, my experience with my children, my experience with other people, my experience with my account, my experience with my brand, and my experience with the level of music that I was dealing with in my own hands. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of times I just feel like in our society, in America, you know, people, Christians, we're, depend on Jesus so much that we won't put the word in ourselves. And the main thing that really that I, I don't rock with is like, it's just always like, I'm gonna pray for you. And it's just like, you can actually physically do something yourself too, more than just pray. And we're so in this mentality that that's all that needs to happen, but we ain't, we ain't praying our way out of prison. Mm -hmm. We ain't praying our way out of the abortion clinics. We ain't praying our way to get our land back that was always ours after gentrification, after the Harlem uh, Renaissance and Black Wall Street was burned mm -hmm. to the ground. Them prayers ain't working. We, gonna, we have to apply actual physical building partnerships. Hands and, it, and it don't start unless we could really be real with each other and say, this is what I did, this is what I did. Like, I mean, look at this. I know I'm not gonna third rail y'all interview, but look at the power of what happened when me and Kyrie was on the same page. See, that's what's- I'm gonna react to it. I wanna make sure you get his whole thoughts off because I know Kanye can go through a lot of these, what other people would think is an in incoherent rant, but then it'll all make sense at the end. So I'm gonna just give him the benefit of the doubt because I wanna hear what, everything that he's saying. Scary. But what they do is they put us each in a silo and say, your grandmother gonna lose her crib and this gonna, you know how I many threats we've been dealt, dealt with? And I didn't pray my way through them threats either. I had to get up and do it myself. I had so much to do, I ain't had time to pray. Mm -hmm. So that's where, that's, that's where my issue is. And look at where I'm at today. Show up. Show up, you know what I'm saying? I understand that that's a, Controversial. No, we got to speak. But I dropped the though. con. No, we got him. And, and, and that's just real life, too. Um, I think that he's 100 percent wrong. And let me tell you why. Uh, uh, first of all, a lot of the things that you create for yourself is a self-inflicted wound. A lot of the situations that we put ourselves in are. Our self-inflicted wounds. And then we sit there and we say, we want God or we want Jesus to be able to show up for us how we want him to show up, not what it is that he feels is best for us. Sometimes he lets us go through it in order for us to be able to learn certain lessons and we don't learn the lessons and then we want to blame it on God or we want to blame it on Jesus in order to rescue us from something that we created for ourselves. And that's not how God works. That's not how it works. Sometimes Jesus also sends to you what you need through other things or what other people or he make you take the long way, but you don't realize it until you get the revelation. Now, I also understand what he's saying as far as actually putting pen to pad or doing it yourself, because basically what he's what he's communicating is faith without works is dead. And so he's saying that, yeah, you can pray, but then you got to actually get up and do something on top of it. 
what made the pro what made the what he said problematic, which I think I understand what he was saying. But what made it problematic is when he tried to blame it on Jesus for not rescuing you from yourself and your own self-inflicted wounds. Ain't nobody tell you to go and get with Kim Kardashian. Ain't nobody ever told you to sign the deal that you decided to, to sign in the first place. Nobody told you to do any of the stuff that you did that was all your own doing. And then because you feel or you believe that this is the way that things are supposed to go. Jesus is supposed to comply to your demands. You don't know what Jesus' plan is. It says that his ways and his thoughts are so far and above what it is that we think that we can even fathom on the face of this earth. But yet he's supposed to be paying, paying attention a little old you over anything else that's going on in the world. That's why we got angels. That's why we got legions of angels. That's why. Listen, listen, bro. I understand what he's saying. And I think that he's conflating the way that he's communicating about Jesus. But I also think that he lacks understanding. And so I'm going to give him a little bit of grace. I'm going to give him a little bit of grace because I think that he lacks understanding to truly understand exactly how God works and how Jesus works, especially considering now that we're in the New Testament. And so I think that this is, a, I understand what he's trying to say. But I definitely think that it's a lack of understanding because he really don't understand how God and how Jesus works. Right. Most of the wounds that we have, they be self-inflicted wounds. But then we want Jesus to come and then come down with a legion of angels in order to make sure that he accommodates us for what we think that we go through. It also says inside of the Bible that it rains on the just and the unjust. Let me say that again. It rains on the just and the unjust. Right. Sinners and, and, and saints alike go through things. Life happens. Sometimes you're born with, sometimes you're born without. Sometimes you get rich, sometimes you don't. But the fact of the matter is it doesn't absolve you from being able to go through some of the things that other people go through. And just because you're a saint don't mean that you're not going to endure through what happens on this earth. As a matter of fact, one of the things that Jesus says is if you suffer with me, you will reign with me. So the very idea that we put so much stock into what we have in this carnal mind and on this earth, this is extra. This is extra. What you do with your lot in life is then going to determine whether or not you get your crown in heaven and whether or not you walk the streets of gold. But I don't believe even a little bit that Jesus has forsaken you. I think that you may have an issue, but you better check that shit at the door because you have a lack of understanding. So before you mention his name, you need to understand what you're dealing with. That's just my personal opinion on that. Bro, yeah. the one thing that I wanted to, when we yeah. did get a chance to sit down, yeah. bro, is, you know, I didn't want to do a thing where, yeah. oh, we got to we gotta hold back. And I don't, I don't even want this to feel like it's an end. saying it's sometimes conversation. And now we're, we're three men here with obligations, responsibilities, and that is. It's really all the people that are stealing from me. Mm -hmm. Speak on it. <laughs> like, right, right. <laughs> I'm responsible for me, family members. Yeah. All that. Mm -hmm. Gotta let it deal with the pain and keep going. Is music where you are right now, Yay? Do you enjoy music where you are right now? Yeah, I love, you know, I love the art of it. I like, man, there's songs like Do It. I love the song, and I hadn't loved a song like that at that tempo since Back That Thing Up. So that's what made me mm. think. I was like, man, I love Juvenile and Manny Fresh and Cash Money. Like this is like, they used to be playing like house music and hip hop music in a club. And like me and my guys would come in and make them play Cash Money. Whoa, whoa, Kimo Sabe, big, big balling is my hobby. Like, and like Juvenile, the Hob video, and just the 400 Degrees album, and you know, just leaning into things. I believe the music came across because I leaned into things that I like when I like what I liked and shit. Technically, Tim says, respectfully, I don't agree with your whole concept and religion that you have to die first to experience heaven. I want my heaven right now. So? Don't nobody care about what you want. I want a billion dollars. <laughs> the word says what it is. And I mean, you could say that you don't agree or you don't believe in the word of God in a way that I believe in it. But the word is the word. It was here before me. It's going to be here after us. 
And don't nobody care about what you want. The only thing that matters is if you go about doing it the right way. You could be successful, you couldn't be successful, but I played a long game. And so it's not, respectfully, it's not about, for me, it's not necessarily about what I want. It's about whether or not I'm actually in the will of God. That's the only thing that matters. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything else will be added unto you. So, but I mean, we might have a difference of opinion just because we may not necessarily see things or believe things the same. So it ain't about what you want. I don't care about what I want. I only care about um, what's right. You know, whether it was like looking at pornography or listening to juvenile or buying my first chain from Jacob or wherever I got it. And I had like, I had a real chain, but then I had like a fake Roly and fake earring, but I had to get the kit because the All-Star game was coming up. Yeah. I couldn't go with just a chain. We got to have a costume. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had to, <laughs> and I had to get the the, the Range Rover 4.0 and try to cover the O and make it a 6. Cause I respect Ye for being honest about his thoughts, so. Jay-Z had like wiped that out, but all of these subjects, you know, I remember sitting with North in Italy and playing her uh, back to me and asking her you know, what do you think about this line in the middle of a song? And I was like, do you think I should change this? And she's like, you know, it's a good song. Sometimes I feel like my mom speaks through her. Wow. So I'm like, she's like, it's a good song. This is just a, this is just a banger. Like you gotta say. And anybody that have a disagreement with me, the link is pinned to the top of the chat for you to be able to can't, uh, jump on here. You ain't even got a cam up what you feel. You know, a lot of times when you go into the whole Jesus, devout, Paul level, fell off a donkey level religious, you have thoughts in your mind and that you hiding them from yourself. And then you sitting there and the whole choir is fucking, y'all singing about that fucking. <laughs> like, <laughs> the niggas are stealing from you from the church. And it's just like, man, like, I. I swear it's just you can only see what's in what's immediately in front of you. Like when they say the Lulu, it's like we lean on a lot of delusional concepts and then it's just actual real concepts. Like say like, you know, a big big topic right now is uh are we gonna sell the album? And the concept that, you know, the streaming companies have made a deal with the people that were in ownership of our contract and decided to give us, you know, a percentage of a penny. Mm -hmm. And people aren't getting paid properly. And you got people that are fans saying, oh, you know, I don't have the money for this. I don't have that. We used to just getting it for free. So they've lowered the value of, of what we do and what we make. Like our, our music, part of the reason why it's so much better is like obviously you got super mega talents but it cost a lot to make this album too we was in saudi italy flights car service strippers you know it, it was expensive that had that. right after he talked about jesus come on man if we and i like yay and i think that yay is a genius and i think that a lot of what he talks about he's accurate on and i like yay and this was right after he talked about Jesus. Right after he said, yo, I prayed to Jesus and Jesus ain't do, ain't do what I asked him to do. And then he talking about being in Saudi and strippers and we all seen him on the boat getting ahead publicly and all of that stuff. Come on, man. Come on, man. What the f what, what's going on, bro? All right, let's just go ahead and get off the religious part because I know that we all disagree. But at the very least, we can all agree that this is some hypocritical shit that he's talking about right after that okay so let's move on from that but now he's talking about the cost and i'm guessing that they spent millions and millions of dollars making an album the value of something is what people are willing to pay for it the value of something is what people are willing to pay for it now i remember when nipsey hustle uh had dropped the album and it was uh buy to pay and he had got the concept or uh, something like pay to play or buy to pay, or whatever it was. And he had basically got the concept from Ryan Leslie. And the idea is that, you know, people pay what they want for the album. And people were paying up to $100. And I think that Jay-Z had bought a whole bunch of albums for like $1,000 an album or something like that. 
Um, the value of something is what people are willing to pay for it. It's not what you invested in it. A lot of people invest and they throw a whole bunch of money modifying and putting a bunch of stuff in cars. People may not necessarily want that car, but just because you put $50,000 into it does not mean the value of that car is $70,000 because you paid $20,000 for the car and put $50,000 into it. That's not how it works. A lot of people will buy a real Rolex, bust it down, and then devalue the watch. The value of the watch is not based off of what you think is worth. It's based off of what other people see and is willing to pay for it. So, the lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. And do you feel like, how will the album go out? You know what I'm saying? You made like, the next ones? Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about like how a movie, like Dune, we went to go see Dune, and they, um, they'll keep that movie a month, two months before it goes to uh, a Disney streaming Netflix, Hulu, or something like that. With our music, they acting like this ain't even. Luxury, like it don't deserve to have this moment where people who truly appreciate the people come out to the theater, the people who, you know, talk about every line and want to hear it and see the, you know, see the listening sessions. Those early adopters, uh, like, it's just supposed to be like, uh, just free. Like, man, I can't wait till my other chairs come. This shit is sitting in the stool. It's cool at first. And then that junk started getting a little irritating, bro. Even like, oh, here's an example. Somebody I was working with put the album for $5 on my site. Everyone on my site at Yeezy.com uh, is a <laughs> $20 for everything. Right. Then my album, like, this album costs millions of dollars to make. Hardship, overcoming, like, personal threats to everyone that was on it. Like, people was threatening our lives. Shout out to Iceberg Slim. Iceberg Slim says Kanye has been a weirdo ever since he stopped going to the barbershop and started dressing like a federal inmate. I appreciate you, Iceberg Slim. Nah, you know, I can appreciate the eclectic, eclectic nature of who Ye is. I can appreciate the eclectic nature of who Ye is because... Um, I don't like all of my artists to be the same or to look the same or to have the same look or the mindset. Like, I think that his, his titanium grills is dope. It's different. It's dope. And I also understand that an artist has to be in a creative space, a creative space to um, create. You know, for me, I can live stream from home. And technically, I can live stream from anywhere. Like, I could do the Millionaire Morning Show anywhere. I could do it from home every single day. Right? I could do it from my place out in the suburbs every single day. But it's a different energy based off of the creative space that I built and all of the money that I invested in the studio. Now, I can't come back and say, well, look at all of the money that I invested in the studio. Y'all should compensate me based off of the cost it take for me to be able to produce the show. That's not how it works. That's not how it works, right? I invested in it, and so the value that I see in it is based off of my ability to produce, not pe people's ability to be able to compensate, right? So that's a personal choice. But I will tell you that, you know, I could imagine that he got his inspiration and maybe the strippers has put him in a mindset to create a certain song and all of that. Listen, you spent a whole bunch of money, you spent millions of dollars to do it, I feel you. I believe that me, my most creative space is not sitting here live streaming on a stool or live streaming from the comfort of my home. I don't care about that stuff. I have to be in my studio and I curated my studio to be as comfortable as possible for me to be able to do it. I'm still modifying it and changing it all the time. It's probably always going to be under construction uh, to some extent as far as changing different things or me having a vision for how I want things to be. But, you know. The value of something is what people are willing to pay for it. Threatening our well-being and actually not even playing with the money. Canceling bank accounts. I got I got cousins who chase accounts, got fired. This is this is real black mirror things that happen. So when it went number one, you know, I called it for people I know, like, yo, do you think Universal was capping my last albums ever since the Taylor Swift moment? Maybe. And no one could deny that that was happening. Like not showing real numbers and the power just limiting turn it down turn that boy down that boy that went on stage and said beyonce had the best video 
turn that down. All the lights is like number 28. Mm. All the lights. It's a runaway, you know. Yeah, that was some great songs. That was some incredible songs. I don't see why Universal would throttle you, though, because if you don't make money, then they don't make money. So I don't know why they would do that. I don't know, but he could be right. Niggas in Paris was not a number one record. What do you think yeah. when people say that can't happen? What can't like, happen? Like, oh, no, that, that, that's too big. There's, that's a conspiracy. Like, people, like, what you're saying right now, that's probably somebody that think, nah, that can't happen. But it can happen. It for sure it can happen. And, and it does happen. And, it, and did. it did happen. My whole thing, it'd be in front of y'all face. That's what I like. When people drop this mental health shit, it makes it seem like, oh, it's like your family member that's seeing ghosts and y'all can't see it. What I love the most is y'all seen multiple ghosts. Y'all seen the ghost of, wow, they ghost accounts. Y'all seen the ghost of, wow, they're selling his shoes against his will with his name on it. Y'all seen the ghost of, wow, that man went independent and went number one. These, <laughs> these are a lot of like, um, uh, myths. And then when the album yeah. came out, it's like mm. they kept on taking it down, if you didn't notice. Yeah, and yeah. And it went back up. And then it's like when Carnival's number one on Spotify, number one on Apple, number one on everything, something else went number one on Billboard, you know? Mm -hmm. And it took a while for that, but now we're number one on everything. So yeah. yeah. You can't, and you one. can't deny it, bro. How do you not beat your brain up knowing that there, that if you are, you're working, and then you feel like mm, something's not right here. They are holding down. Like really putting in with services or the reason to just say, man. Shit. And you know, just look at the. I'm just gonna, I'm just talk billionaire math. To, oh, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> you know, it's like billionaires. They just they just didn't accept the indoctrination from school that makes you overthink stuff. Stuff is right in front of you. I looked at the math when I went to Adidas. They wasn't giving me a percentage at Nike. I went to Adidas, I looked at that math. Now I'm looking at just the conversion rates. Like we dropped the, we dropped the pods at $200 uh, right before Christmas. And we got like 3,000 sales and between the merch maybe made a million that, that one day on that website, which is uh, low for the amount of sales and the audience that we had with, with the Yeezys. So then I always had this vision of doing everything, $20. And it's like my grandfather jumped through my body because he used to take me to the flea market when I was young, when I was lower than the table. Mm -hmm. And he had his house and he had his store across the lawn on the same property. And he had his Cadillac in the, in the, in the driveway. And he would go and teach me how to hustle and say, you know, and then go to stores in Chicago. You go to stores selling everything, some, some baby dolls, some toys, some fireworks. Some other, like, just whatever someone might need, like a right. Home Depot right or QVC. It's all over the place, man. It's all over the place. A lot of artists have a tendency to get a little weird after their second or third album. I agree. The labels really be doing something to their psych. No, I don't think it got nothing to do with the label. That's the part that I disagree with. I think that it got something to do with the lifestyle that they live. Man, you got to remember, man, these people be city to city, state to state, hoes more money than they ever seen or had in their entire life, living like rock stars, never had nothing when it was coming up. And now, you know, they start getting eclectic and they start getting different. Warrior, I'm taking my pants off. I still got my hoop shorts on like Dame Dash, but I'm definitely taking my pants off. Now they get more money than they ever had before. That junk could ruin you, bro. That junk could absolutely ruin you. It ruins your psyche. It ruins your perspective of what life is, what value is, who women is around you, all of that. It ruins everything, bro. Appreciate you, Charles, uh, uh, Carl Oakley. I was about to say Charles Oakley. He kind of thing, but it's his job as a merchant to do that. So it's like that merchant is inside of me. That's why I always think of all kind of products from like house to shoes to the music, or like even while I was dealing with Balenciaga and Gab, there's times with the deal where it's just like grandfather just hopping through the phone, like speaking on my behalf, like, you know, mm -hmm. you know I'm saying I invented every style of music of the past 20 was Apple, you know, I ain't never met with Tim Cook. They always send Larry Jackson or 
Eddie Q or Ebro to come talk to you and so and I'm like, bro, I'm Steve. How I ain't gonna meet with I'm the new Steve. How I'm not gonna meet with Tim Cook. For you was employed to Steve. I'm Steve. So and of this music game, I am, but not under Lucian. Mm. You're saying I invented every style of music of the past 20 years. I created the genre. I created weekend genre, Trav, Drake. You know, every, 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 I'm going to say with all love, Future and Thug also because the auto tune album, mm -hmm. 808s. If you think about it, no one think about, everybody think about Trav, Weekend and Drake, but no one thinks about Future and Thug also, the auto tune album. Now everyone, they added what it was to it, but here's a new genre. It's called making your own money genre. genre. And this music is called like take. Mm. Mm. Gay is a genius, and we all know that um, he's been incredibly influential, and he would could quite possibly be one of the greatest artists of all time. But completely inventing John, the last 20 genres or the last 20 styles within hip hop. Listen, before Ye and before T-Pain, even when it came to 808s and Heartbreaks, and I remember when 808s and Heartbreaks came out, is it was really groundbreaking. And I loved 808s and Heartbreaks. But, but can't we give a little bit more credit to Andre 3000? It was a lot of people that had an influence. Andre 3000, Akon, 808s. And, like, I'm not saying that he didn't have an influence, but it's a lot of people that impacted what was going on in the culture in addition to Ye. In addition to Ye, it was a lot of people that impacted what was happening in the culture. Cuddy. It's a lot of people that was influenced by what was happening in the culture way before Ye with 808s and Heartbreaks. Like, I think that one of the most impactful things was when Andre 3000 and, and Big Boy dropped that double album. And it wasn't hardly no rapping on that mug. And I was like, whoa. And people mess with it. And people mess with it. So, you know, a lot of people don't realize that Andre 3000 has switched over from Southern Playalistic. Cadillac funky music. We gonna get you high, high. A lot of people ain't familiar with that. See, y'all used to AT aliens and 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 hey y'all and. And big boy and all of that stuff, but y'all not y'all don't y'all not familiar with 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 players ball. See, listen, man, y'all can't talk this hip hop stuff to me because I'm really, really, really I lived it. I lived it. Bone thugs and harmony shit. You might as well throw a hey in the middle of the bond. You might as well throw that in there. Crucial conflict. Do or die. Do you want a Johnny P? From Chicago, do you want to ride with me? Nate Dogg. Nate Dogg was one of the first ones that was that was killing it. Everybody was influenced by, by Roger. Roger and Zap way before any of this other stuff. So listen, man, when we when we talk about this, come on, man. Come on, man. Let's let's get let's let's get all the way to it. Everybody was. Even when, even when, I remember when Roger Zapp, way before in the 80s, I remember when he dropped that, uh, it's a song called Chocolate City that he dropped on the, um, on the soundtrack with the Martin, where the chick was crazy on that Martin movie where she was super crazy. Uh, what was it called? I forgot what it was called. Chocolate, chocolate city. When the city of Berlin. 
Trap and shitter. Come on, man. Come on, bro. It was a lot happening. Tila. Tila. A lot of people not familiar with Tila. Thin line between love and hate. That was the name of the song. Thin line to be. That's the name of the soundtrack. The name of the movie was Thin Line. Thin line between love and hate. Obviously, we know Computer Love. It's a lot of things, and now I do think that he's been very, very impactful and influential, and in all of that stuff. But man, let me tell you something, bro. I come from an era where I'm not just familiar with what happened in the in the 2010s and the 2000s and the mixtape era. Yo, I was listening to albums that was way back. I'm talking about, bro. Let me tell you something, bro. I can name some albums that was in my favorite top ten that a lot of y'all probably not even familiar with. I'm talking about Conscious Daughters, um, Christian. Shit, man. Bro, that's what we prided ourselves on all of the different... See, y'all only know the, 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 the popular stuff. I remember when, when Biggie dropped B-sides with the Brad and Funk the Fag. So, 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 Funk the Fag. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I was listening to different type of stuff that was way, way before a lot of these people ever came into, into existence. So you know, I don't, I don't agree. I think that 808 and Heartbreaks was a transformational album, and it was a breakthrough album, and it was very influential at the time. But I also remember a lot of these other albums that had a very, very, very big impact. Um, way before, way before Ye even came into existence that maybe even he was, was influenced by, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know, bro. I don't know. That middleman out because they ain't giving us money. They giving us acknowledgement. Mm. I don't want your acknowledgement. And I went so far past any level of knowledge, man. I was banished, I was exiled, I was canceled multiple times. So what, I done had like my kids not show up to Sunday service, right? Somebody said you can't be a musical genius and not know how to play an instrument. Tell that to Michael Jackson. There's plenty of stories where Michael Jackson did not know how to play a musical instrument, but as a result, his brothers did, or he would sing what it is that he wanted people to play inside of it. Man, come on, man. Listen, that's not true. That's not true, bro. Not true. Right in front of everybody, and you know what I mean? Like, I'm crying to see my daughter and all of the usual suspects, the Handlers, Dave Chappelle, Meek Mills, Diddy, uh, all these people aren't in position. And for us as celebrities, they got to call and put a leash on them. What are we going to do with Ye? They, oh, he delusional. That's the best. Dave, give him a call. Diddy, give him a call. Tell him, tell him we ain't like the T-shirt. Tell them like right now the agenda is this is this is the voting agenda for the celebrities for the black. Make them do exactly what LeBron would do. Make them do exactly what Drake would do. And y'all know, y'all know my stance on this. I want to say something about the number one. What's so good is the fuck you of it. Yeah. And for everybody that's working at a, a normal ass job, like a fast food restaurant or somebody girlfriend and left them for some nigga with more money or whatever the fuck it is. All nigga want to do is just like pull up in that <laughs> so they can pull it right in front of this bitch and be like, fuck you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I just pulled up on everybody from last year. Cancellation like, fuck all you niggas. Fuck you. Fuck him up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's ego. I, I mess with Ye. And I rock with Ye um, to a larger extent. But, yeah. Yeah. Pete Rock and C.O. Smooth was slapping. It's a lot of people that was slapping. I loved uh, Mr. Mike. A lot of people not uh, not familiar with Mr. Mike. I don't think that Twist to get enough credit. I don't think that that uh, rap a lot was dope. Was dope. Everybody on the West Coast. It was a time in my life where all I did was listen to the West Coast music. I was listening to Richie Rich. I still listen to Filthy Rich out there in Oakland. Shout out to Filthy Rich. Um, I was listening to uh, Richie Rich. Um, damn. I listen to Naughty by Nature, Tretch Don't Get Enough Credit, 
Busta Rhymes was one of the greatest concerts that I ever been to back in the day. Um, man, it's too many to name. We can go to Tribe Called Quest. We can go into the Foo Schnickens. We can go into Dies Effects. We can go into the Law, uh, Lost Boys. <sighs> Diggable Planets. PM Dawn. Man, look, bro. Look, you, boy, Big Five Nine, Filthy Rich. Drew Down, shout out to Drew Down. Shout out to my dog uh, um, from the Loonies. Shout out to the Loonies. The Fugees, Razcast, Raz, Raz Assassination, Onyx, Elzai from, from um, um, my boys down in, my boys over here in Detroit. You know, Climax and all of that. Yeah, man, that was one of my favorite albums. Far Side, shout out to the Far Side. Yeah, man, it's it's a lot of people, bro. It's a lot of people. EPMD, yep. DJ Quick, I was really down with DJ Quick. Yo, I remember when DJ Quick and uh, MC8, a lot of people not, not familiar with the Compton Psycho. Compton Psycho, MC8, um, DJ Quick. Tonight's the night. Yeah, a lot of people not familiar with tonight's tonight where he was drink. Uh, he had to, he was sitting there and he was looking straight and he had that fucking messed up um, cover photo and then he came back and he was in all red and all of a sudden he was a blood and all of that stuff. Yeah, man, I'm familiar with all of that stuff. So shout out to all of the people that's in the chat that understand the game and understand Slum Village. Yep. Shout out to everybody in the chat that understand history. Okay, so we got some. We got some people in the chat that actually understand Comp is Most Wanted. Yep, CM Dub, Spice One, X Clan. Yeah, shout out to the people in the chat that actually understand what's happening out here in these streets. All right. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. I see y'all, I see y'all. All right, y'all. Unfortunately, we got to go over to Don Lemon. Jawan Hart says Cortex. Hewitt, October 1971. I don't know what that means, bro. You got to give me some insight on that. I don't know what you're implementing or, 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 or what you're referring to, but you got to give me a little bit of insight to the, on that. Shout out to everybody that's out here in the streets that actually know what's happening. And Selly Cell, shout out to Selly Cell. Yeah, man, it was a lot of, hey, Crips and Bloods. I don't know if anybody mentioned Crips and Bloods in the chat, but the Crips and Bloods was had some dope um, albums. My man's used to always bring that Crips and Bloods album. Uh, a lot of people not familiar with KD hitting corners, riding in the back, some rooftop, digging the scene where the players lean, cruising up on you, hitting corners. <laughs> Boom. My boy Mac 10, uh, nothing but a cabbie hit. What do you consider fun? That's the bomb, that's the bomb. All day, night, and all day long. That's the bomb, that's the bomb. When you wake up in the boy, don't get me started with the West Side Connection. Dub SC. <laughs> all right, y'all, we got to get off, off this. We'll be here all night talking about this stuff. We'll be here all night talking about all of this. <laughs> Y'all nuts. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. We got to get the Don Lemon. We got to get the Don Lemon, y'all. Don Lemon. No, nah, music won't ever be the same. It's different now. It's 100% different. Apologies, one beer from MF Doom samples. I never really got into MF Doom. That's I just couldn't do it. It's a, it's a few people that I just couldn't get into. Shout out to MF Doom. I just was never able to get into MF Doom. I'm surrounded by old hair right now. Who are all of these artists? Oh, look at Technically Tim. Shout out to my Canadian people. Technically Tim, yo, man, listen. If you don't have a lot of this stuff that's inside of your, inside of your, your repertoire, in my opinion, it's very difficult for y'all to be able to talk hip-hop. That's why, that's why when people say, oh, man, you ain't going to be able to talk hip-hop. Man, listen, bro. 
I will wrap circles around you when it comes to talking about hip hop. A lot of people are not familiar with what's happening out here in these streets. A but a law, Superman. <laughs> Superman, because to my mama, I'm a real black Superman. Not anybody know. Black Superman. That was my junk, man. I remember I used to go to sleep with that junk in my ears. I believe that I was being programmed. I genuinely believe that I was being programmed. I used to go to sleep every night just listening to so much music and so much hip hop. It was crazy, bro, what it, what it was that we've been dealing with out here in these streets. That's why I think that my brain might be fried, bro. That's why, that's why it's so easy for me to reference stuff on the Millionaire Morning Show. What up, Smitty? What's up, Anton? Chilling, chilling, my friend. What's the word? Man, nah, I just wanted to stop by, man. I just want to let you know, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you, Smitty. I'm about to add you to the stream, bro. Hold on. Why you, what, what's up, Smitty? What's the word, big dog? Nah, keep doing what you're doing, man. You know, it, it's a lot of it's a lot of lost souls out here, man. Yeah, I agree. I agree, bro. It's crazy out here in these streets, bro. Yeah. But but we gonna work. We gonna get to it. We gonna work. We gonna break this stuff down. And uh. I don't know, man. I think that everything that I learned and I experienced and all of the stuff that I witnessed in my lifetime and the music that I listened to, I just think that it groomed me and it put me in a position to be able to talk about a lot of the different stuff that we see happening in society today, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. It's, it's absolutely insane. Like, I've seen it all, bro. I've seen it all. I've seen so much, bro. But I can only imagine, you know, the, the Midwest is a different place, man. I, I don't think it gets a lot of credit that, you know what I'm saying? People don't give a lot of credit that it needs. Yeah. But we, but see, one of the beautiful things about the Midwest, I think one of the reasons why we got an advantage on people from other regions, including from the South, the East Coast, and the West Coast, is because the Midwest was kind of forced to learn about every single other culture. Um. Whereas, like, the West Coast kind of had just stayed West. New York niggas is fucked up, bro, because New York think that the, that the world is centered around New York, and they didn't even realize that they had lost control of the culture when the South came in and kicked their ass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and in the South, you know, the South, they so big because New York is New York, the West Coast is the West Coast, but then the South is crazy because... The South is more than just Atlanta. The South is Florida. You know what I'm saying? The South is Texas. Yeah. The South is Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? So the South, they were so consumed with just the South, whereas over in the Midwest, we had to contend with and we had to listen to everything to take everything in. And so we was we was influenced by what was, what was happening with the Wu-Tang Clan, you know, in 36 Chambers and Ghostface Killer and the Purple Tape and everything like that. And then we was over on the West Coast because we was paying attention to what was happening. You know what I'm saying? With E. Fon uh and, and the boot camp click and, and all of them and all of them boys over on the West Coast and, and Crips and Bloods and, and, and uh, you know, L.A. politics. And we was listening to Dr. Dre and the Chronic and Snoop Dogg and Corrupt. And Corrupt was the best freestyler. But then at the same time, we was paying attention to rap a lot and and and, and eight ball and MJG and Tila and Mr. Mike and. You know what I'm saying? While we was also listening to what was happening in Atlanta with JD and 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 AT Aliens and you know what I'm saying, Outcasts and all of them boys. And so we was really paying attention to everything and we was influenced by it because we wasn't as impactful, but I think that it made us better than everybody else because we was able to take everything in, bro. It was different. It was different, bro. I agree. I agree. Yo, we was, we was listening to Bone Thugs and Harmony and you know what I'm saying? And Twister and, and, and everything, bro. We was just in common and everything, bro. We was just listening to all that stuff. That's that's all, that's the music I grew up on. So all right, I'm already knowing. Yeah. Yeah, so it is different, bro. But a lot of these people, they're not familiar with it. But I am. I'm super familiar with it. So I don't know. I appreciate you, Smitty. Thank you, bro. For sure, for sure. All right, big dog. All right. 
Um, let's see what we got over here. Is it Tommy? Tommy, you Hello? Mute. Yeah, what up? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, man. Well, first, I want to say, you know, shout out to you, Anton. I love the platform. love what you're doing out here. Thank you, my friend. And the second thing is, I got this situation, man. I want to know, am I, am I being a sucker nigga or not? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm hearing you. All right, so. It was, uh, it's always a female. It was the girl I was talking to, right? <laughs> and I ended up talking to her. I was keeping a player at first, ended up falling head over heels and fumbled the bag. Where the fuck you want to say, wait, wait, right? Wait. What do you mean by you was keeping a player first? So I was doing what normal niggas do, just chatting her up. Because I was working a lot. I'm still in college now, but I was in college. I was working. How old are and you? And I was just, huh? How old are you? I'm 20. Okay, I got you. When you meet her, how old was you when you met her? I was 20. This is fairly recent. Okay. So you just met her? Yeah, I just met her, like, last semester. Okay, I got you. Go ahead. And then so uh, she just graduated high school or whatever. And <laughs> I uh, was talking to her, and we was cool. We was kicking it. We went out on a date. And then, you know, again, I said I fell hell head over heels and I, I was I fumbled the bag or whatever. The, I guess I you would say. The bag. Well, on the first date and this is I had limited dating experience. So the other girl I took on the first date, I kissed on the first date. Mm -hmm. And I, so I tried that with her, even though I felt the vibe was off. But I just I was like, all right, I guess it's just what I have to do. And she pulled back. But after that, we had a conversation about it. And she said um, she didn't feel comfortable or whatnot, whatever. But then she said she still wanted to keep talking. So I was like, all right, cool. And then eventually the conversation just died off from there. Okay. Where'd you meet right? this girl? Where'd I meet her? Yeah. In class. Okay. So what's the problem? Here, All right. Here we're going. So. Fast forward, I got a, a neighbor, and it's funny you were talking about that pillow talking shit uh, last couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see, I, I happen to see the girl in my neighborhood. <laughs> see, yeah, that's the same reaction I have. Like, damn, I ain't sure, is it? And I'm like, damn, that. Damn. What happened? You you went out, bro. You went out. I can still see you in the back, but you went out. Your audio was out. Crazy, hey, man. All right, all right, all right. Hold on, hold and on. That, I wait, see wait, her wait. over here. I see her whip and shit. And I seen her. I was like, oh, hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So here's the part where I was like, am I keeping it player or not? Can you I hear me? I feel like it was just kind of a bad Tommy. deal that he went behind. I mean, Tommy. no one owes me any respect or loyalty out here. Tommy, can you hear me? But still, uh, to be the one that I was talking to her and then. You went behind after. That was fucked up in my eyes. Can you hear me, Tommy? Tom, Tommy, can you hear me? Tommy. I don't think he can hear me. I don't think he can hear me, bro. Well, listen, if you can't hear me, let me just tell you this, bro. Look like I lost him. I dropped. He dropped. Bro, listen, man. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm gonna try to get him back up here. Give me a second. Oh, am I back? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. All right, cool. So, all right, start back off where you said you seen her in your neighborhood. So yeah, I was coming. I was going to work. Obviously, bag chasing. I work on the weekends and stuff, okay. as well as during the week. And I look behind me because I'm looking for something in my back seat, and I see her. I'm like, oh. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean you see her? Coming down the same stairs I walk down every day. So you was in a you was in a you in an apartment building? Yeah, I live at home still. So I go to and so she was walking down the stairs that you was walking down, but from a different apartment? Yeah. From my okay. neighbor's apartment, the guy I go to school with. <laughs> I know it's that, that's what I said. I started laughing. I was like, damn. So what's the problem? So I was wondering, am I tripping if I don't really rock with a nigga like that no more? 
If you don't rock with her no more? No, not her. I don't care. I mean, that, that's she's going to do what she's doing. That's your home, oh, because that's your, cause your homie is fucking her? That's why that's what I was saying. I'm asking. Am I tripping? Am I not? Are y'all right? cool like that? Or are you way? just like, are y'all cool? Or are you just, he just like an acquaintance? Mm, that's the thing. I feel like we've had some conversations. You know, I've helped him. We've done each other favors and stuff like that. Like, we'll sit in the hallway and talk and shit like that. Man, he don't owe you nothing. Don't be getting no emotional over no bitch, bro. That's what I was thinking. I was making sure, man. And, sure. and, and let, me, let me tell you something, bro. I'm going I'm to keep it, I'm going to keep it G with you, bro. Don't get, you, she not yours, man. Don't get mad at her either. That's what I'm saying. That's why I was, I why I was feel like I was at. But in that moment when I saw her, I felt some type of way for sure. Yeah, your was feelings was hurt because you loved her. He did, that nigga did you a favor. You should be thanking that nigga. And I was like, I was like, man. Because when he did I, you, you know, a favor. I questions. Why would you be mad at him and he did you a favor? Well, I mean, I wasn't talking to her no more when he got her. So I mean, it is what it is. So what difference does it make? He still showed you what it is that you was that that you that you messed up with. Yeah, that's true. That's true, man. Oh, well. And he, ta- and he thought he should have taught you a lesson. The lesson is stop getting overly emotional and emotionally connected to these chicks and then falling for their chameleon ways, bro. Listen. Nigga, I'm telling you, man. I was there. I was, Listen, the first... Uh, I'm not going to sit here and go through it. I done gone through this with my homies a million times. Go ahead. Tell me. Oh, but I was like, at first, again, I was keeping it mad. Like, I was chilling. I was cooling. I was playing the game the right way. And I fell in love. So you love that girl. <laughs> what I say I love what I say I, I loved her, probably at least a little bit. Probably, I don't know. I don't fucking know. You ain't you ain't never did you ever did you ever hit it? I didn't. That's the sad part. That's the craziest part. So you she never hit her. it. You never even got a kiss from her. Nope. How I you know, fall? It's, it's even, wait, 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 wait. It's wait, even worse on. when you break it Hold down on. like that, right? Hold on. How you fall in love with a chick that you never had access to? That's, this is questions I ask myself on the daily. What was y'all having? Late night conversations or something? Late night spiritual conversations. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep it a thousand, my guy, because I've been reading. You know, I've been reading the book and shit. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What kind of spiritual conversations? Listen, this is what she hit me with, Anton. And this shit is going to make you roll when I say it. Because I already know how ridiculous this is. I was telling her, because I could do this and this shit make me roll. So I was reading the Bible. And usually I don't answer my phone. Like when call, people call, I'm trying to read and shit. <laughs> and um, she hit me and I was like, yeah, I'm just reading. She's like, you know, I've been, when well, you hear the shit, you finna roll. I said, you know, I've been praying to the Lord for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I said. And that shit got me. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing out here? <laughs> that shit. And and for some reason in my mind, I was like, I, I had just read, you know what I just read too? I just was reading about um when Abr when Abram, uh, Abraham sent uh one of his uh his manservants into town and was like the manservant prayed, like, Lord, if the woman comes out here and feeds this cow, this is the one for my master's son. And I was like, I was like, man, this shit can't be coincidental. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this can't be coincidental. There's no way. <laughs> you asked God to show you a sign and she called you? <laughs> I was like, there's no way she sent this thing and this could be coincidental. I was like, this <gasps> is insane. <gasps> this is insane. And then she went upstairs and she sucked your homie's dick, nigga. Hey man, that's part of the game. It is what it is now, but goddamn. Listen, that, shit, that man, shit was still crazy. Let this, let this be a lesson to you. She's not your worst. It's yeah. just your turn. And don't and listen, don't get emotional. Don't turn bitter towards women or none of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the thing that you gotta look that you gotta pay attention to is, and I say it all the time, people need to be selfish before you can be selfless. You need to be focused on you, bro. Run up that bag, become successful. Don't become emotionally attached. Don't fall in love all easy. Don't let women women pull on your heartstrings. All of that shit. Fuck that, bro. Just, just yeah. like, don't switch up on your man's. Like, oh man, you fuck my chick. No, he did you a favor. He 
he showed you she was for the streets. And so you don't look at him funny. Like, he just executed. That's all he did. That, ain't, that wasn't even your chick. Like, that ain't your wife and nothing like that. That ain't none of that. He ain't even probably go after her. He probably seen you was trying to fuck her, and she was fucking him the whole time, bro. He imprinted on her. That's all it is, bro. Let me ask you a question. I tried to ask this question in the super chat, but I'll be quite brief with it if you allow me to do it. Go ahead. Do your thing. All right. So, you know, I'm in, I'm 20 years old in college right now. And obviously my, ma I've gotten my community college for free through scholarships and stuff. Shout out and to my you. major is in radio and TV production. Thank you. Shout out to JT pocket watching too, for putting me on. Yep. Um, and you know, I'm still debating, should I go to, uh, finish at the cop, the university and the tuition would be free. Most likely. Wait, what, what, what kind of, college. what kind of, um, what, it's what bullshit. it's radio and TV production. That's all it is. Man, get on out of that, bro. That's what I was thinking. You need to pick something I, that's actually going to make you some money. Okay. Like, for real. Every Anything STEM-related. So, should I go back and... Because I would have to go back and do a couple math classes and stuff like yes. that. Yes. Go back and do okay. them in community college. Science, technology, engineering, math, all that stuff. That's the stuff that you need to go with. Fuck that... That radio and all of that stuff, man. Get out of that shit, bro. Pick something for real. Okay. Are you good enough Should to I be even... like an anesthesiologist or something like that? Uh, I don't know, but I want. I don't have any desire to be a medical person, but I probably do tech. Listen, tech in and out. It ain't about desire. It's about what's gonna get to the bag. That's true. Only thing. Listen, my boy's a, a job. Right a job is a gateway for you to make a lot of money so you can do what you want to do. So you can invest in the things to ultimately do what you want to do. Anesthesiologists usually make the, mo the most in any hospital, bro. They make more than any profession in, in, a, in a hospital. Just telling you. Like, look at, look at when you go and study these careers and these professions, look at what your capabilities are. And then also look at what it is that these, these um, professions generate, bro. Right. I mean, and, and you don't have to be an anesthesiologist. I'm just giving you options. Like, think outside the box. Don't think based off of this shit that everybody else do. Everybody go into business. Everybody go into history. Everybody go into communications, marketing, all of that bullshit. It's all bullshit, bro. Don't do nothing liberal arts. Anything STEM related. You can you could even be a nurse, bro. Traveling nurses get to the bag. They make a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? You can you, you could be an RN. You could be anything, bro. Anything, yeah. anything, engineering, nursing, technology, cybersecurity, all of that stuff is good stuff, bro. You young. Let me ask don't you worry, this. And don't, worry about, and don't worry about being broke. You're supposed to be broke. You're young. Okay. Let me, can I ask you one more question? Yep. If I didn't go to college route, you know, obviously I have. I've go to college. Stuff. Okay, go to, all right. go to college. Just, just minimize the amount of student loans that you get. And go into a profession that's going to make you a lot of money. Go to college. All right. Say yes. Well, it's, it's a fact. It's a fact that people that graduate with a bachelor's degree uh, make millions of dollars more than people ultimately don't in their lifetime. I don't give a fuck what they talking about and what they saying. The difference is that you got to go into a profession that's actually going to make you money. Go to school. You're 20. You're supposed to be broke. Fuck these hoes. Don't get them. Don't get them pregnant. Don't fall in love. Don't do none of that. Focus on becoming the best version of you. That's all you need here. Cool. All right. Yep. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate the, right. the platform, too. Thank you. All right, my friend. All right. Uh, Darnell is in the building. Shout out to Darnell. Darnell says, keep grinding, bro. Next time, it'll be a dude outside your house. With tears in his eyes, Matt, because you went balls deep on, one. <laughs> on his one love, you dig? Shout out to Darnell in the building. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, man. Man, stop, stop focusing on women, bro. Go into, do something that's going to get you some money, that's going to get you the bag, and, and run that shit up. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really want to talk about Don Lemon. Uh, I think that he's a cornball, and that Elon Musk interview is Fairly long, all right? So we're going to forego Don Lemon tonight. We're going to go to bed. We're going to focus on Millionaire Morning Show in the morning. Then we got Wednesday night popping off. 
So we got to get it in, y'all. All right? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. We passed the two-hour mark, so we there. We there. All right? We there. We're going to be back at it on Thursday on After Hours. Um, Anton Daniels channel tomorrow night. And Millionaire Morning Show in the morning. All right? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Stay focused. Stay up. Stay on top of things. And we're going to get to this money. I'm going to holler at y'all later. Peace.